bunch of life gained. So we probably will cycle the stinger. We get a big draw there. Um, so it's actually working out not the worst. I was kind of salty earlier, but we're getting to demonstrate the power of the minus ones and the scorpion god. Getting that draw going is really nice. Can we double cycle? No. Yes. I think we can. Hey everybody, welcome back and thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game. We're playing Friday Night Magic. Historic Brawl is in rotation. We finally get to play with the Scorpion God. We've been waiting a while for this. The Scorpion God revolves around putting minus one, minus one counters on your opponent's creatures and drawing cards for doing so. We are combining the Scorpion God, obviously, with anything that revolves around putting minus one, minus one counters on your opponent's creatures along with cycling. Uh, cycling is great because of our infer. Whenever we cycle or discard a card, put a minus one, minus one counter on each uh, creature opponent's control. That's amazing, right? This is a very cool combo between the Scorpion God and Arcfiend of Ifner. I don't mind it. We've also got really cool things in the deck like Soul Scar Mage, and whenever we would deal non-combat damage to a creature and opponent controls, put that many minus one, minus one counters on that creature instead. So we have direct damage that will put minus one, minus one counters. We have cycling and discarding that will put minus one, minus one counters. And we have the Scorpion God, which can just take advantage of all those minus ones, and he himself can put minus ones on things. So that's very cool. The syn synergies within the deck are uh, relatively high. A lot of people are ultra competitive within the Friday Night Brawl, I'm finding. I didn't know that there was a prize pool involved, <laughs> right? Everybody's playing their Kinans and stuff. But luckily, we were able to beat uh, a few of them out pretty easily with this Rakdos cycle slash minus one, minus one tribal deck. So as always, we break down the deck in its entirety, all the individual cards. This is a Brawl deck, so it might take us a little bit. Uh, get ready for some laughs. And then we're gonna talk about the strategies, the synergies, which we kind of just over browsed or like uh, overviewed really quickly. Then we're gonna look at some gameplay footage, you know, breaking down all the different play lines and interactions that we can find within the Friday Night Magic Historic Brawl meta, which is brand new. Nobody plays Historic Brawl consistently um, or regularly, I don't think, unless it's with a group of personal friends. Um, so it's really fresh and it's a great way to just, you know, build a random deck that you have cards with, uh, try out some jank and go have some fun, which is cool. Um, and then finally, we've got our closing thoughts, just channel upgrades, stuff about my life, you know, a bunch of stuff you probably don't care about. And again, you can skip to any point throughout the red bar at the bottom, all the chapters are labeled. If you find any value within the video, I really would appreciate a thumbs up. It looks so much better once it's turned blue anyways. And then subscribe, share the channel up to a friend, all that jazz. So um, the Scorpion God, this is our commander. Legendary creature God, 6-5. Whenever a creature with a minus one, minus one counter on it dies, draw a card. We can pay three at instant speed to put a minus one, minus one counter on another target creature. When the Scorpion God dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Into our one drops. Soul Scar Mage, creature, human, wizard, and one, two with prowess. Prowess means whenever we cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. The creature itself is a one, two, and if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to a creature and opponent controls, put that many minus one, minus one counters on that creature instead. Shock, instant speed, dealing two damage to any target. Footfall Crater, you know, this has cycling for one. We talked about the cycling archetype within the deck. We can also enchant a land to allow it to tap and give a creature haste and trample until end of turn, which is, a, you know, it's pretty cool, especially when we've got big baddies like the Scorpion God. Um, you know, a little bit of extra mana to give it haste and trample. Not too shabby. Blazing Volley, Sorcery Speed, dealing one damage to each creature and opponent controls. Thought Seize, Sorcery Speed, target player reveals their hand to you. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. You lose two life. 
Ruthless Sniper. This is a 1-2, and whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one. If you do, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Festering Mummy, 1-1. One, one. Whenever it dies, you may put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Dead Wanderer. This is a 2-1. Enters the battlefield tapped. We can pay three to return it from the graveyard to the battlefield, activating it only time we could cast a sorcery, and if we have one or fewer cards in hand. Easy Prey is our first two drop. Instant Speed, cycling for two. Destroy target creature with converted mana cost two or less. Vile Manifestation, a zero four creature horror. Vile Manifestation gets plus one, plus zero for each card with cycling in your graveyard. Uh, and then cycling for two. Blur of Blades, instant speed. Put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. If uh, you do so, Blur of Blades deals two damage to that creature's controller. Drain and Stinger, a two, two, cycling for one. And whenever you cycle another card, Drain and Stinger it deals one damage to each opponent. Go for Blood Cycling for one. Sorcery Speed. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Teutonic Reinforcement. An enchantment. Each land uh, in your hand has Cycling for one red source. And then this card itself has Cycling for two. Underworld Fires. Sorcery Speed. Dealing one damage to each creature. Uh, and Planeswalker. If a permanent dealt damage this way would die. Exile it instead. Arcane Signet. We all know this. Artifact. Tap it to add one mana of our commander's color identity. In two or three drops. Goblin Chain Whirler, 3-3, three, three, first strike. When it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to absolutely everything that your opponent controls themselves, their planeswalkers, and all of their creatures. Sweltering Sun, sorcery speed, three damage to each creature, cycling for three. Anger of Gods, three damage to each creature. If a creature dealt damage this way, it would die. Exile it instead. Sorcery speed. The first interruption, a saga. So when we play it, it deals one damage to each creature without flying. On the next upkeep, we add two red mana to our pool. And then on the final upkeep, it sacrifices itself as well as sacrifice a mountain. If you do, first eruption deals three damage to each creature. So another nice field wipe there for three. Shake the foundations, instant speed, dealing one damage to each creature without flying. We draw a card. Splendid agony, instant speed, distribute two minus one minus one counters on uh, up to two target creatures. Nest of Scarabs, whenever you put one or more minus one minus one counters on target creature, create that many 1-1 one, one black insect creature tokens. Lethal Sting, as an additional cost to cast the spell, put a minus one minus one counter on target creature you control. Destroy target creature. Cartouche of Ambition, enchant creature you control. When Cartouche of Ambition enters the battlefield, you may put a minus one minus one counter on target creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has lifelink. On to the glorified 4-6 with Menace and Indestructible. Can't attack or block unless you sacrifice or, uh, sorry, unless a creature has died under our control this turn. <laughs> we can pay to sacrifice another creature. Scry one. Each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So you see how we can just sacrifice our own creatures for two to get that attack and block active. Bail for Amit. This is a 4-3 with lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature you control. Soul Stinger, this is our first 4 drop, a 4-5, and when it enters the battlefield, put 2 minus 1 minus 1 counters on target creature you control. When it dies, you may put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on target creature for each minus 1 minus 1 counter on Soul Stinger. That's pretty cool. Um, all of your minus 1s have to go on one creature, though that's the only downside. Magmaroth for 4-5-5, five, five. at the beginning of your upkeep, put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on it. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, remove a minus 1 minus 1 from it. Radiant Lightning, instant speed, dealing 3 damage to target player and 1 damage to each creature that player controls. Storm's Wrath, dealing 4 damage to each creature and each Planeswalker. And the Merciless Javeliner, this is a 4-2 in which we can pay to discard a card at instant speed to put a minus 1, minus 1 counter on target creature. That creature cannot block this turn. That's pretty neat, right? Unpredictable Cyclone, <laughs> uh, this is a cycling spell for 2 enchantment. If a cycling spell of another non-land card would cause you to draw a card instead exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a card that shares the same type of the cycle card, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost, then put the exile cards that weren't cast this way on the bottom of your library in random order. Pretty neat, I think. And then Arc Fiend of Ifner, we talked about this a little bit, a 5-4 flying, and whenever you cycle or discard a card, put a minus one minus one counter on each creature your opponent controls, cycling organically on itself for two. Uh, Caniferix Demon for six, a 6-6 six, six with flying. It enters the battlefield with two minus one minus one counters on it. We can pay one to remove a minus one minus one counter on it, putting that minus one minus one counter on each other creature. Woo, right? That's crazy. And of course, Godzilla Doom Inevitable or Yadara Wandering Monster for those without the art. An 8 8 with trample and hay cycling organically for two. Whenever you cycle Yadara Wandering Monster, shuffle into your library from your graveyard. If this card was cycled four times, put it into the battlefield from your graveyard instead of going back to your library. Anywho, these spells are accompanied by a single Fable Passage, a Command Tower, a Temple of Malice, a Dragon Skull Summit, Canyon Slow, 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 Blood Crypt, 
mountains uh, times nine, desert of the fervent, swamps times three, a Phyrexian tower, and if Efner, Ifner, deadlands, a desert of the glorified, and a barren moor. No sideboard because we're playing, uh, you know, Brawl today, so we're not getting to use that. Whew, that's the deck list. Sorry for all of that, but, uh, you know, we do have a select sect of the audience who listens to my videos like a podcast, so uh, we do get the audio in there for them, familiarizing themselves uh, of the deck via my voice. So, uh, you know, it is a red and black deck that focuses around the minus one, minus ones on your opponent's creatures to help you draw cards. That's going to be your whole get. We can cycle right that helps us draw what we need it also helps us put more minus one minus ones on stuff and then we have a little bit of direct damage and damage effects uh, that combo quite nicely with our soul scar mage and again it's a single copy so it's a pipe dream but you know stuff like our goblin chain whirler our storm's wrath radiant lightning uh, there's just so many things underworld fires lots of stuff deals uh lots of damage to everything blazing volley is another one uh so it's really cool to put those universal damage effects all into minus one counters um and then eventually your scorpion god will draw from them and it doesn't make uh, the job as hard for your other damage spells like sweltering suns now if everything's got minus ones on them now we're hitting things with four now we're hitting things with five right so on and so forth so that is a really cool you know the deck does suffer it's a jank build you know this isn't competitive and Again, I mentioned that I think there must somehow be a prize pool attached to uh, the Friday Night Magic here, which is pretty goofy, but uh, you know, it's still a really fun deck. And if you have the Scorpion God and have been looking to build a deck around it, this is a great brawl variant. Um, you know, and it really makes me want to get into the historic and focus around the Soul Scar Mage and Scorpion God. Um, even the Nest of Scarabs, I really, really like this because you can put minus ones on your own Scarab. To make other scarabs and it just gets out of control so um i really want to make uh an egyptian themed uh couple style of decks right like uh, am and cool anywho uh without just rambling on we're going to try to save all that rambling for the end of the video the strategies and synergies we know the strategy of the deck we've talked about it a few times minus one minus one cycling get card advantage the synergies within the deck, you know, we started to talk about that a little bit throughout the Soul Scar Mage and the damage effects. We also have the Cyclone and all the cycling to play stuff for free. Uh, you know, that's a Moonshot as much as the Soul Scar Mage is though, but a lot of these synergies are Moonshot and you just kind of have to use them as they approach you because with one of a kind, uh, the consistency of pulling them is not going to be there. And that's why we try to blend just everything together uh, to make it work really, really well. Again, you can put your cartouche on something really big like the Scorpion God, um, and then that's going to gain you that life so you can sustain yourself until the point where, you know, you're amassing all of these minus one, minus ones on your opponent's creatures, and there's just nothing they can do because you've been removing their creatures and you've been drawing cards for it. Again, this is hard to get positive value, but once you do, it really does take off from there. So as far as like individual synergies and strategies go, there's not much to it. In Unpredictable Cyclone is bomb if you can get it going. Soul Scar Mage is bomb if you can get it going. If not, it's just the general strategy of surviving, wiping the field if you need to, and then amassing your army after that. Again, you know, it's not uncommon if it's an aggro deck to let them play their hand out and then just use Anger of Gods and go from there. Uh, you know, let them play all the 1 1s, Goblin Chain Whirler. You don't need Soul Scar Mage and Scorpion King to wipe the field. Obviously, yes, that's great once you have it in play to get the advantage, but it's first about surviving. If they've got a field state you can remove, go for it, get it done, uh, and that's going to be the ideal thing to do there. I wish there was more to talk about here. You're going to really pick it up from the gameplay footage. We had some really good matches and some really bad matches. So, uh, you know, for those of you who don't know, Misplay is my middle name. We make three brand new decks a day. So, uh, it does kind of get away from me. I wish I could play, you know, for 20 hours a day instead of 14. So uh, with that all out of the way, I'm on YouTube every morning, 6 a.m. Mountain Standard. At 7 a.m. Mountain Standard, we're on Twitch. And then we're back on YouTube at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard. You don't want to do the time conversion. I understand. Link tree link in the description below. It'll take you to my Twitch. It'll take you to my YouTube. You can subscribe. You can follow. You'll get the notifications. Then you don't ever have to worry you know, uh, we have free entry brawl tournaments. We gave away 120k gems last month. We have 350 still to give away. 
So don't miss out. Check out MTGA Arena Assistant over Wolf Link in the description below. Deck write-ups, deck videos, metagame analysis, yada, yada, yada. Check it out. Go to your settings, account, detailed log, plugin support. Then you're good to go. You'll get it right in the top left just like this. Just like all the pros have. And you can begin to compete at the highest levels of Magic the Gathering Arena. Enjoy today's Friday Night Magic. Rakdos, Scorpion God, uh, Commander, minus one, minus one, Cycling Theme, Brawl Deck. I hope you enjoy. After the gameplay footage, we're going to be back for all of my closing thoughts and shenanigans. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Free land with a command tower. I like it. There's just one thing I don't really care for, and it's the fact that, uh, you know, apparently there's a prize pool out for Friday Night Magic. Everybody's got their best deck in play. We'll do our best. You know, I just want to have a fun match. Right? Have things work out strategically like I had planned them within the build. Right? We want to cycle. We want to put minus one, minus ones on. We want to trigger stuff from our Scorpion God. Even though there's no enter the battlefield effect. Kind of a bummer, but... The good thing is that you don't have to re repay his diminishing returns. Um, you know, as long as it didn't get exiled. If we don't pull the land, we can cycle for it. Worst case, right? We're at three, trying to pull to four. A red source would be ideal, but it's okay. Three land. Exile. Yup. Dead card though, unless uh, you know we're sacking something. So they play Daxos instead. Okay, get you on the exile next turn. We still need the land, right? We're building to five. I kind of want to keep this for the token. I'll cycle this now. We should have cycled it before we played our swamp. And then we could have potentially gotten a, a mountain here with the cycle. Okay, it's not the worst, right? Like, it could be worse. We do get our land, which is semi good. We may as well just knock Daxos down a little bit now. Just so we can get our Scorpion King out and then potentially interact with it with our Chain Whirler. I will rend the sun from the heavens. The uh, devotion from Elspeth helps Daxos quite a bit. Toss our flyer out. Still looking for that uh, secondary mountain. Right, so the Goblin Chain Whirler will be really nice Together, here. We can exact justice. It's a nice cleanup, unless they Anthem here, which would suck. The fact that I thought about it means that they will. <laughs> right? Stop it. Yep. That's, uh, that's how she goes, boys. Bummer, man. We'll never, like, we can't even cast the, the Whirler. There's no way we'll get them both out.
can just replay ECD. Ugh. me still yep hanging out good times good times good times we could pull a sweeper off the top I guess down to 19 Again, why aren't they attacking with their whole field? What's up with that? Why don't people do that? It's like, I'll never attack. We'll use our indestructible creature so it doesn't die. It's a sacrifice Elsa. Give it protection so the target can't happen. A little bit frustrated today. We want one more win before we give it up. Um, yeah. I guess we could have killed uh, that Jazz, but... I need... <laughs> I need that red source, but... Oh no, we have the sack. Cancel. A little bit of a misplay there. Um, you know, we should have tried to pick up that 1-1 one, one with the minus when he activated it to uh, use it. But then I guess they probably could have just like redone the stack, couldn't they have? More Elspeth, sure. 19 life, I guess, is nice. I am proud of my comrades. Makes our Chain Whirler, you know, semi-valuable again. Ooh. Okay, I'm glad we hung on to it. One, two, three, four kills. Bunch of life gained. So we probably will cycle the stinger. We get a big draw there. Um, so it's actually working out not the worst. I was kind of salty earlier, but. We're getting to demonstrate the power of the minus ones and the scorpion god. Getting that draw going is really nice. Can we double cycle? No. Yes. I think we can. I don't know if I want to sack something, right? 
we have to sack our bond too. Um, I guess we can smash in. Like such. We have 19 life. They're not killing us. We have plenty of draw ready. No quest is easy. I say we just go for it. We'll give our god life gain, auto pay, sacrifice bond to. It's a bummer, but whatever. And then we're killing Loxodon. It's a pretty nasty turn, right? We swung the momentum of the game in one turn completely uh, 180 degrees. They have 41 life still, <laughs> right? And a Baneslayer Angel. Hmm. At least we have a 5-5. Five, five. Let's start with the Cycle. I guess we should have Cyclone in play for all of that jazz, shouldn't we? Or should we just cycle our way into Oblivion? Probably. We get the draw here. Baneslayer is down to a 3-3. Three, three. Need more cycling. Or you cycle or discard a card. Dun, 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 dun. Not quite. I guess we'll do it the old fashioned way, right? Take our scry. All of a sudden, the 1 1's not that threatening. <laughs> right? It can do as it will. First strike, I guess, but we get it on the return here. Oh, it's a dragon or a demon. It's got protection from demons. I see. Underworld Fires and Chain Whirler can both eat that up next turn. Three damage to each creature as well. Um, so how does that work? Is it still just a minus, or does it have... Yeah, I think this still, still has minuses, and Basri won't trigger it. So Basri should have went... Um, man, I don't want to sacrifice a mountain. But we must. Bunch of life gained. Why not? Cycle our land. Kill Basri, draw a card. We still have 28 cards. Play our land. Play our javeliner. Play the sniper. Oh gosh. Um... Oh no, we don't have that much. Let's, uh... Let's go this way instead. Just going super duper wide. Uh, we'll put it on itself, I guess. We attack for 12. Taking chunks out. E, C, Diddle on our Scorpion God. Fair play, fair play. Uh, we will take it back. That was Exile, so we have to pay more for it. I mean, I guess. Why not? Let's just end our turn. God Rager's more expensive, but they're done with it. They see where it's going. Good game, and finally, we get to showcase the Scorpion King for you guys. That's awesome! Any opening hand with the Command Tower is very good. Let's be honest. We're going to scry first. There's nothing really great in the hand other than decent land. So, you know. I 
I don't mind it. We don't have a ton of cycling payoff right now other than our stinger. Zoria's artifacts. We do have a few cycling cards on hand, at least. Then all of our land will become cycling. Bouncing our stinger. Hmm. I guess. We don't really need to keep any cycling lands in hand because we can do it a little bit later on with any land. Oh man, these artifacts are frightening me. I'm scared. We have plenty of uh, counter shenanigans. Really? I guess I don't really have anything. We got good defense on the creatures. Thing is, we need our own creature in play. Should we ramp mana? Right, that might be a uh, the way we have to go. Scarabs will be good. We don't need cycle lands yet. I wouldn't mind getting the Stinger back, but it's not necessary or that big of a priority, I guess. So we'll hold on a little bit. We're always, like, limited. It's not just, like, auto-plays. You kind of have to think about things. The only way it would work is if we pulled another land. We'll just play probably right into a counter, I'm assuming. Any other way. Let's hold off. Let's just try to long con it. We still have 20 life, right? And then we're not going to do a lot of damage right now, but I don't think, uh, you know, it's going to help at all until that third trigger. But it's on that, that third phase where you sacrifice a mountain. If you do, uh, we get to deal three damage to each creature, right? That's going to wipe their board state. We had two mana here. They're totally tapped. Oh, they return the Arcane Signet, so they have two mana left. Interesting. But I don't think they'll counter our Scorpion God for two, will they? Creature or Planeswalker, that's not us. They could return Yorion back to their hand, couldn't they? That'd be really good. What? Interesting. They want to take one of my permanents, right?
Let's try it. Counter for two would be hardcore. We only have two mana. It's a bummer. But we can start utilizing some of these uh, minus one, minus ones. Woof. It's still very bad, right? Um, I am imagining that that uh, the deputy is going to take our scorpion god. They bounce Yorion. But if when Yorion comes back, like they're already on their end step, so everything they bounce doesn't come back this turn. It comes back on their next end step. Right? So now all they have is Yorion here. Which is a good play, right? And we can't cast both of these. Yeah, that was a good play. And then we put the minus one, minus one on them. It gets us a decent life gain hit here. Unless it gets bounced. Or they let it hit and then they bounce both. I guess both are the same. We get the insect, which is nice. And then the life gain should help us. If they trade, we get another insect. Or is it... No, we don't get an insect, we draw a card. Here's their bounce on our end step. Back to 20 life does help. And there's just like a... Hands probably, right? They cleanse the minus one, minus one. Crazy. The Archmage and uh, Yorion's a good little shenanigans combo there for sure. No blocks here. They have full mana, so we're probably playing into counters. They're giving us the good game. Do they have like an overwhelming presence or something? They have seven, they're one lunch. No, they've got the signet, that's eight. The, the sea god. Nice. Bounces Kyora for a secondary eight eight. Stop it. Um that hex proof, that won't work. Yep, 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 yep. Um want to destroy this one and there's our counter. Counter makes its own insect, right? So just like it's nothing. Which is nice, but uh you know look at this, right? That's some some value cookies for dinner. Woof. Secondary 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> bounces uh, his Archmage again. Archmage, I think, only bounces creatures, though, is the thing. Creature or Planeswalker, yeah, so. Not bouncing his Sea Gods again. But, we're dead here to lethal. Woof. Not quite as nice as that first match, but... Uh, Pretty fun brawl match, nonetheless. Any hand with the command tower in it is basically a keep.
I think we will just immediately enchant our land. I'm not sure there's so much cycling going on, but you know, a little bit of haste never hurt anybody, right? Just to tap it. We have a removal up. Sorry, Kinan. Or plant and the Elysian Kertrid has been burned up. So it's a bummer because we have to tap it. But nonetheless, let's just get going, right? They take the turn off for a Simic Locket. We're sitting on three land. We've got nothing to do other than cycle. Which is what we'll do. Maybe we should have done it there, tried to get the land. My bad. First misplay of the game. We do have instance to kill this guy. That's actually, <laughs> that's good. You know what I mean? Sometimes you get lucky. Uh, let's take the attack here. Yeah. Auto pay, we have to sacrifice our creature. Whooping King is in play. And let's try to uh, get some more little creatures in play. We can cycle this, worst case. They go right into their Kinan. Land where else? Okay, we need to deal with that. Kinan's not so great unless they've got a lot of mana behind it. So if you can isolate all of their ramp, you can get away with some jazz. Well, we should just mine us immediately on that land of elf, right? <laughs> oh, and it enters the battlefield. Two minus one, one minus one counters on it. For six. One, two, three, four, five. That wouldn't work. I think we should probably just, uh, you know, snag. Draw a card, see what we get. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna kill Kinan as well. Oh, no, we're not. No, we are not. I guess we can cycle. Down to 11 here. I doubt they block. It could be a bounce. So we're going to wait until they target it. Right. And then whenever it dies, I don't want to pay more for it. I just want it to come back. So I just let it go, right? As long as they don't exile it from our grave, we're good to go. Hit for three. Blast Kinnan off the field. It just is fun. And then zombie in play as well. That's the immortal sun. Ah, uh, well, that's not good. We have no cycling in hand, so I think we should just cycle this. 
Yeah, we should have. Our Phyrexian Tower is tapped, so that's not good. We could have given it haste. Uh, misplay after misplay here. I gotta slow down. As long as there's no Thassa, right? No bounce of this agent, it's gonna be okay. They pull Thassa with Final of Devastation, don't they? For five. That's on us. I mean, real original, right? You know what I mean? Playing with Thassa and Age of Treachery in Historic Brawl. Mortal Sun, I guess. Whatever, bro. Attacking our creature. Putting tokens on this agent, which will be cleansed when they get bounced by Thassa. Deal damage, draw a card, play a land, doesn't help us. I mean, cycling land for a land is no good either. Good game. Back ourselves up. I'm not fond of Thassa, Agent of Treachery, it's like, is winning that important? Question mark? Have fun, do something new. Free Mulligan, sign me up. Still only two land, but now this is a lot of fun. I hope we can survive long enough and people aren't like super competitive. Because... Soul Scar Mage, Scorpion God, Goblin Chain Whirler. I like that. This is what I'm into, but I don't think we're going to get there. I feel like our opponent is going pretty hard in the paint. We play the red in case we do pull, um, you know, another red source next turn. Just get the body out. I'm not sure how much cycling we'll be doing this match. Fighting our mage. Ouch. Ouch. We're all so hard to come back from, once you get behind. Playing a mountain, I hope. Jaw rail is good. It's nothing right now. Other than cycle for a land. A little bit of damage, that's fine. I mean, normally we like to play that, but we're too far behind already. Wow. Alright, so we're good to pack up here as well. This game's over. Not pulling land, it's just like, it's too much. Good game. And the worst part is, they still have so much damage to do. Right?
Ah, more lands. Remember when I said we weren't going to be cycling? This would be nice to get out. Maybe I won't cycle it. I mean, statistically, we should pull land. We could get our mage back somehow, that would be cool. Mm, pretty nice. We're gonna need uh, three damage to everything as soon as possible. Or just a land off the top. Either three damage to everything or a land. Oh, I think we have Storm's Wrath as well. We've got a couple uh, outs here. Sultering Suns, Storm's Wrath. Oh, we don't have that second Swamp is the thing. Woof. It's a nice defender. We need a second swamp, eh? Woof. Tons of draw. So even if we do get a wipe, right? I love when people don't attack and brawl. It's just like, okay. Just build up this wall to oblivion. Like, this game's been over for a while. If we come back from this, you know, I'll, I'll stop, but... Paying life here. No attacks. It's a good block. And it works well with the Scorpion God and very well with our Nest of Scarabs. So, you know, let's play it out. Let's see how this goes. We got a snag, Jawriel. Oh, it's already over. <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah, just when we we're going to get turn it around a little bit. I don't quite think so, HGG. You're gonzo. The land isn't good, but we have Anger of the Gods, which is what we needed last game. We have to mulligan for better land. And of course, we don't find it. Keeping six. Tossing a land. Not good, right? Great way to start a brawl match. I mean, that's just uh, a given. Chalk the mana dork. We'll cycle this for one on our end step, I think. Not sure how much cycling we will be doing. Visionary. Well, maybe we'll just kill the visionary. Just one damage. Um, I'm expecting the visionary to be tapped for mana, so not attacking. Yeah. 
Wow. We should just do this now, right? We lose our dude, but let's just get that ramp slash soon to be 3-3 three, three off the field. This crusade is deadly. One, two, five mana still. Dropping something. Hopefully just their planeswalker and then that doesn't trigger it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> we need anger of the gods from the top. Anger or auger? Anger. Nope. I mean, the draw is cool, but it's not happening. We could deal two damage because. Uh, no, just one damage. Two damage if we do it this way. Right, and we do get Sweltering Suns, which helps, but we're too late to the party. We gotta get this redeem down. And one more mana, right? One more mana. We could have got the field. Not happening though. This, uh, you know. And it creates a bunch of tokens, and those tokens all trigger. Oh, right, gross. Oof, dangerously seventeen. I understand. Sure wish we could play our scorpion god here. I have arrived. Wow. So there won't be a tap from the redeemed. They can just power themselves up. My strength is our strength. Hit for seven. You can't wipe. We can kill redeemed. Right? This won't work. Is it worth? It's a very hard call. Let's go for it. We got it. It's okay. Just a casual 6-6 six, six that we can't block. We have 24 life though, and that's kind of the nice thing. As long as this redeems, it doesn't go on a tapping party. My god is dead, but Oketra's teachings still guide me. Mm -mm -mm. You can see how that's going to get out of control. What's that scavenging ooze? I trust gross. Your gross, gross, gross. If it taps, we can kill Basri. Strength is our strength. Right? Nuke the field. And attack Basri, but then we're just like, oof, no indestructible here either. Ouch. An arcane signet. Awesome. Not enough mana to do anything meaningful. 
Let's just wipe those two creatures. Throw up a chump blocker. And we need to take that draw engine away. So we don't kill Basri, but we take the Radiant Champion down to four. You call that passion? Sixteen life. Chump blocker. Chain Whirler. Oof. I don't know, right? It's gonna be weird. They have plenty of land. One card in hand. A 9 9 ooze in play. We have our god. Stop it. Perfection Who does that? Is a journey, not a destination. Consider That's too much. This a warning. Right? <laughs> Casual Ugin. Let's throw that in there. My strength is our strength. Oh yeah, why not, man? Look at that damage. And we don't even have the mana to Oh no we do. This is a savior. Doesn't really help us at all. <laughs> but it's kind of uh, you know, a cool thing that you can do within the deck. Right. I could use a hand. With two chump blockers. Uh, <laughs> you know what's what's the right choice here? You know what I mean? It's just uh it goes from bad to worse every turn it's uh seeming. Let's hit Ugin. You know that makes the minus three not possible. But it can just plus on our mage. Oh shall I? There's a respectable top deck, respectable top deck. Good game, good game. My son All things fair and playable. I mean, yeah, we can take out that 3-3 with Indestructible if it didn't have Indestructible. And if we had our first strike creature. Ignore, Ugin! That's not very nice of you. From the will of many, the might of one. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Scorpion King, uh, you know what? People are not too into the uh, arachnids or whatever you want to call them. Insects in general, right? Ooh. More two land hands. I can't handle it. Free mulligans, please. I'll keep this only. Only because Sweltering Suns. And it's Helioid. Which looks like, uh, you know, not a great time. And I think we absolutely do just get right into the gate. Let's find ourselves a swamp. That arcane signet helps. What about the hiccups today? Can't get rid of that. Hold my breath and suffocate. That would you're supposed to do, I'm pretty sure. Starve your brain of even more oxygen. <laughs> Let's get that thought season play. Take a little pixies here. We can kill you. We can kill you. We can't kill you. For six though. Doubt it. Let's get rid of that indestructible. Linden's is really good too, though, is the thing. Instant speed. Don't mind if I do, Hugh. Don't mind if I do. 
And I actually don't mind if it Johnny goes to three because we're just wrecking for three next turn anyways. A little bit of life. We can hit for three, sure. We got rid of their indestructible. Not that they have the mana for it anyways. And sadly, I mean, we're not ever going to get to showcase the Scorpion God because when we do set ourselves up uh, for a position to get that far, people just end the game. Maybe not here, though. Maybe there's uh, a little bit of a comeback in play. Who knows? Scorpion God's in play, you guys. They got him in play. Are they going to allow us to have fun? I certainly hope. You would assume that the Ruthless Sniper has reach, but apparently it doesn't. That crossbow or the bow only shoots at the ground, not in the air. It's how you lose your arrows. <laughs> okay, let's have some fun. This Helioid's kind of annoying, the fact that it did that to us. And I still think we destroy the life gain. Oh, no, 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 no. That won't work. Oh, no, it will. Just cycling for two general. Yeah. We don't have our uh, Scarabs thing, which is a bummer at this point, but... It's okay. And now we cycle. Throw that over there. Oh, we have to pay one. That's on me. That's embarrassing as well. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, let's try to get one good match today. Well, we have our land, but, I mean, we don't really want to be sacking creatures. Free mulligan. Let's just play defensively. Play our Anger of Gods. Yarrick is annoying. Let's just play out. Is the haste important? I don't think so. I think for, um, you know, Swart Land. Forty-two percent chance to draw land should work. Doesn't. Let's just cycle. Our best card away for land. Okay, okay, okay. We're both back at 25. The Guardian Project, wow. What an amazing draw engine. We go to four. I mean, worst case scenario, we sack our own guy. Best case, we grab a land into our Scorpion God. Immediately into a Yariok. Grody. Double draw for it.
At least the life gain down at least a little bit. No attacks. We probably want to sacrifice our Festering Mummy with Bontu. We can knock it down by two more. Doubling your Uro with the, like, look at this. Uro gets doubled and Guardian Project gets doubled. Wow. Stop it. They probably just will kill us and replay their Yariok. Omen doubles too. <laughs> Yeah, Yoriok's great. They're totally tapped, at least. Hey, if there's no removal, maybe we get a turn. I just, I, I'm pretty sure we're gonna get Agent of Treachery. Or like just some great, yeah, good game. That doubles as well. So it's like, fun match, bro. It's not bad. I mean, it's not great. Ooh. We might want to keep the cycling lands. This is a uh, janked up deck. This is nothing uh, competitive. We're playing against Kinan, so my hopes are not high, question mark? Right? Um, we might just build into our Sweltering Suns. Should be easy enough, right? We'll play the expensive uh, Cycling Lands first. Yeah, Kinan into Druid, right? It's just, it's pretty gross. So, you know, we're gonna answer that with this. And it's just like... Bye-bye! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Stop it. All right. I really shouldn't film the outros immediately after the intro. I'm out of breath from reading all of these cards. I'm tired. I need a break. <laughs> um, you know, I had a lot of fun playing this deck, and sometimes that's what the game's about. It's not about always being hyper competitive, even though, even though that's what it seems to be the majority of the time with other individuals. I get it. But, uh, you know, maybe if you only played a little bit at a time, you know, when you do play, you want to win. But for someone who's playing almost all day, every day, I just want to have fun. It's not always about winning. So uh, I love the theme decks, right? They're meant to be made. They exist for a reason. Just because a deck isn't good doesn't mean it shouldn't be played, obviously. Um, you know, I've had more fun playing and losing with this deck today than I have had playing with Team Air Adventures all week, for example, right? So stuff like that. Um, you know the YouTube schedule, 6 a.m., 6 p.m., Mountain Standard. Don't want to do the time conversions. You know, hit that notification icon, the bell, and, you know, then it'll pop up on your phone. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then we're on Twitch uh, at around 7 or 7.30 a.m. And uh, if you want to get in on that, you can go follow me on Twitch. We've got the link tree link takes you to everywhere. Overwolf takes you to the download link to the assistant, which is great. It's got everything. Um, download that. Not many people downloaded it, which was the thing. So if you've not downloaded it yet, download it. Uh, every download does help me a little bit financially. It's 
obviously not enough or I wouldn't be yelling about it. <laughs> um, so tired. We're doing two videos a day for a long time now. No one else is doing two videos a day. That's got to count for something. We may be burning out. Whatever. That's the cost of success. Let's go. Let's pony up. Uh, you know, that's the biggest fear among creators is not being successful, not getting where they want to go. So we've engineered around that. We got the gem giveaway. That's a great excuse to yell at people to subscribe. And it's like, there's our backup. And, uh, and now we're doing the two videos a day, which is like, well, we work harder than everybody else. So I think we deserve it and you get what you deserve. So with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share it to your friend. And, uh, you know, if you want to support the channel financially, I encourage you to do so. It really does help. Eventually, we'll have better internet and the content will be better and the stream will be better. My internet device has shipped after a week. If you guys have been following these outro vlogs, you'll know I've been a little bit frustrated. With this new company hasn't shipped my new internet, but it should be here on Tuesday, I hope. And we've got uh, a booster that goes with it. So we're going to have to go pick up some parts and assemble our new internet, which is mobile all throughout Canada. So your boy is good to go on his laptop and can you know maybe go camping this next summer obviously it's winter now hashtag bummer maybe just maybe we can like uh i don't even know how that would work that, would, that wouldn't work people would not have someone else drive me snowboarding while i record footage in the passenger seat on my laptop <laughs> nobody would swing for that uh but regardless you know i could go get a hotel room at the mountain do my streaming content in the morning and then go snowboarding in the afternoons for a little bit right and this is the dream uh, to not be tied to your location location security or freedom is of utmost importance because i work hard that working hard obviously has got nothing to do with it i put in 12 hours every day for years without a day off but i still go out for four hours in the afternoon right like i can't work 20 hours a day that's fucked up but I want those four hours to be, you know, free time, going snowboarding, going quadding, you know, hiking, um, walking my cat, all this random jazz that you love to do during your days. Uh, so we've got the mobile internet, got the laptop, got the online business kind of merge them all together, keep uh, compounding and getting better. And, you know, ideally the dream is to kind of travel around uh, the world and uh, well, maybe not now, cause stuff but eventually hopefully she goes back to normal and uh you know i've i've been out of canada sure uh i've been to the caribbean but that doesn't like you know going on vacation 15 times in your life is not seeing the world it's like i understand what the caribbean looks like all the islands are pretty similar it's just like a little bit different um you know i want to go to south america even like i've not been to the states uh europe australia it's just like and a little bit of Asia, man. I'd love to go. I know China's kind of crazy, maybe, but um, Japan for sure. Absolutely. Sign me up. Um, so, you know, that's kind of hopefully what the future holds. And, you know, maybe not the next year, but, uh, you know, in the following years. Um, and normally I don't really plan like that. But that's one thing that this channel has taught me is like, you know, time is going to pass regardless. And you'll go where you plan also regardless. So, you know, set your plan and go where you want to go. You know, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. If you guys want to talk about anything in general, you know, I'm always in the Discord. We've got lots of people in there as well. Always open to talk about magic and not magic. So it's a great place for that. And uh, that was the kind of closeout for the video. Friday Night Brawl was awesome. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you a little bit later. Take care.